we are young, we are free. Do 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 we are one. La la la, blah blah blah. All right, so I was laying down in my dojo, right? Just relaxing and like the Lord told me you need to preach about this and then he like gave me all this conviction and stuff like he usually does when I know I have to preach so I'm like okay Jason I'm gonna have to preach Lord is telling me to so I just like get up and do it for him because it's like it's what he wants me to do so that's what I'm gonna do is preach about judgment day because there's so many believers now or they claim to be believers I'm, I question it the reality of it um, they, they certainly don't do what Jesus told them to do which is love yourself as others love God and to love your enemies they don't like doing that. Um, I think the last mark of maturity as you grow in your faith is loving your enemies, to tell you the truth, um, and blessing your enemies, and trying to understand your enemies. I think that's the last marker of true faith maturity is to love your enemies and to bless your enemies. Um, because on Judgment Day, we're going to be asked this stuff. Like, a lot of us, us believers, we, we, we have read at least one of the Gospels. I've read all of them several times, but most believers out there, they at least read one gospel once so it, they can't claim ignorance on this fact um they can't be like oh i didn't know man you knew in fact it's the main pillar of our faith is to love others and to treat others as ourself which means if you, they're hungry you feed them if they're thirsty you give them water if if they need of if they have like a need of emotional support you you are obligated by Jesus to do it for them the same cuz if you look in the bible water and food is pretty much an allegory of the body <laughs> um I think it's best to bless your enemies and to bless those who persecute you and abuse you and use you. Um, we're told in Matthew 5, chapter 5, to do that, to bless those who curse us and, and, and to bless those and pray for those that despitefully use us. Now, that's a big thing in Mark and Maturity as a believer have you prayed for your enemies i i just want to know from the christians out there have you actually prayed to your for your enemies have you prayed that they'll have a change of heart a change of mind a change of spirit have you done that because if you haven't you're not you, you haven't really matured that much as a believer because you're still thinking that you're wrestling with flesh and blood which as believers, we should know better that we don't wrestle with flesh and, flesh and blood, but we wrestle with principalities and things in high places, which means we struggle with morality, not, not others' morality, our own eternal, internal morality. 
we struggle with on a daily basis, but for some pe reason, Christians don't want to teach people that we struggle with our own, own personal morality. Instead, they like to shame people who do struggle with their own personal morality, which we shouldn't be doing. We should just be being like, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. You, get, you can continue to go down the wrong way, but it's just going to get you hurt. Or you can continue to go the right way and you'll be blessed abundantly. You keeping up yet? Um, see, on Judgment Day, and, and Jesus prophesied this. On Judgment Day, there's going to be a certain amount of believers, quote unquote, in Christ who are going to be like, hey, haven't I prayed to you, Lord? Haven't I done all this blessing for you, Lord? Haven't I given, you know, my 10% tithe to you, Lord? And Jesus Christ looks at them and he says, get away from me, you who practice iniquity. So he's going to turn down actual believers because they practice iniquity. And what is iniquity? It is sin. They practice sin. It's not like once in a while someone says something bad to you and you're like, screw you, man. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those <laughs> day after day shaming, belittling, dehumanizing, gossiping, trying to ruin other people's lives, being little tattletales, those type of people. You know what I'm talking about? Those type of people are those who practice iniquity. You can look it up in Romans 1, those who practice iniquity. They're malicious, they're backbiters, they're, they're gossipers, they're debaters. They're, they're, they're people who, who want to hurt someone because if they were truly believers in Christ, they wouldn't want to destroy someone. They would want to lift them up and make them great like they are great in their own eyes. Anyway, um, even though they're not, Jesus will tell you that on Judgment Day. Uh, no one is good but the Father. So stop thinking you're better than others. When Jesus Christ said, you call me good? Jesus said that. You call me good? No, 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 no. Man, man, nobody's good but the Father. I'm not even good, man. Come to that realization that you are not good. Humans, and, and I, I think this is... Someone with my um, personality disorder would, would really know about because we, we, people with borderline personality disorder tend to have this like black and white thinking, you know, someone's an angel or someone's the devil when that's not reality at all and that's something that therapy helps breaking you from, is from it. It's called splitting, um, you know, making everything either bad or good. But it, the, really, the, the reality is, is human beings are gray. And we really need to remind ourselves of this, that human beings are gray. We are both capable of doing good and bad. It's all based on your own personal choices in life. And I have the tendency to not want to choose evil. I want to not be called someone who practices iniquity by Jesus Christ. That would be the worst thing I would hear. Yeah, I mean, this, this is what I want to hear when I enter the pearly gates. Good job, you who 
who who I love deeply and 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 you're worthy of me and 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 you were of good faith and of good nature and I love you cuz you you helped people the best to your ability I want that to be said to me I I definitely don't want Jesus to be yelling at me, telling me, get away from me, you who practice iniquity. Because really, if you're practicing iniquity, do you really love Christ? Christ told you to love your enemies. Christ told you to love others as yourself. Do you really love Jesus if you're denying people of certain things because you claim you love him? But yet, like, I, like a couple Christians today... I was like, they were, they were, or, and yesterday, they were coming to me talking about certain people who are known haters of mine and I guess trying to get me to reveal information about them and stuff. And I'm like, dude, it's not my place. I'm not going to do that. It's evil. I wouldn't like being it done to me. So why would I do it to them? Even though they've done that to me several times. Um, but it's like, it's, it's, I want to look good in God's eyes at the end of the day. If, if man misrepresents me and looks at me in an inaccurate manner, that's fine. But God knows the truth. And I want God to call me a good servant. You know, because I, I tried my best to be like him. And, and, and to serve him the way he said he wanted to be served. Which is to love others. I mean, I mean, I mean it's not that hard to comprehend. He said, love others. While there's so-called Christians out there telling you to hate a, hate someone or they they want to destroy a person. And it's like, you're, you're, you're coming in Jesus Christ's name and you're desecrating his name like that. By coming in his name and then saying you want someone destroyed or, or you, you want someone harmed. And you're coming in Christ's name. You're, you're just, you're being blasphemous. You're being blasphemous. You're not, you're not representing Christ. You're representing Satan. I'm sure there's plenty of times Satan has come into plenty of people's lives saying he represented Christ just to twist things to his favor for destruction. You shouldn't have to destroy your fellow man. Um, I'm seeing what's happening in Israel right now, and my heart is breaking. My heart is completely breaking over what's happening to Israel right now. Because the people want freedom. They don't want a dictatorship. But Benjamin Netanyahu has to pull a trump on everyone. He needs his power, which I tend to feel people who are power hungry, they can't represent God very well either, because in order to represent God, you are supposed to sacrifice yourself on the altar for him. It, it's... Like, to represent Christ doesn't mean to gain power. It means to lose power. So you can have the Holy Spirit work in you in a right manner. You have to sacrifice yourself. But these power-hungry people who claim they love God, their actions say differently you know it's it's when the bible says judge them by their fruit 
You know, if you see someone who has no patience, they lack self-control, they're malicious, they're haters, they're liars, uh, most likely that person is definitely 100% not representing Jesus Christ in any way. Because if you look at the fruit of spirits, there's self-control, there's love, there's joy, there's patience. It's meant, like, the Holy Spirit is meant to comfort you. It's meant to, to make you realize that you are whole with the Holy Spirit. And these so-called Christians come out representing Satan with their anger and their fury, fury and, and just complete disregard of other people and their feelings. And they try to claim God while they're not presenting patience. They're definitely not presenting self-control because if you had self-control and if you didn't like someone, you would be like Jesus and you would be silent. Which you are not. You're loud. You're brash. And you definitely do not pray for your enemies. Because if you prayed for your enemies, you wouldn't want to see them destroyed, but uplifted. And I, I will say, for me, and I'm not tooting my horn, but I'm, I'm saying this as an example. I pray for my enemies daily to get better, to, to not be like that, to rid them of that leaven of the Pharisees, you know? I, I, I pray for them daily, and I want to encourage people to start praying for their enemies and pray for other people's enemies. Um, start praying for our leaders. You know, you, you wonder why our world is so bad. People forgot to pray for their enemies. Why do you think they're running amok? Are you asking God to help you stop them from running amok? No. Instead, you're like, they don't deserve my prayers because they've been so horrible. Well, maybe it's not to bless them per se, but more like fix the problem that you have with them. You know, how, how, how are you ever going to fit or help your enemy if you don't lift them up and give them encouragement that they can change and, and make peace with them? It says in the Bible, try to make peace with all people. Like, be peaceful. It's, it says in Matthew 5 that the peacemakers will be called children of God. If you're not a peacemaker, how could you call yourself a child of God? If you're constantly out there to destroy someone or hurt someone or pwn someone, whatever, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You're not representing Christ at all. At all. You're not lifting up your neighbor. You're tearing them down. Imagine if Jesus did that to you at your very worst. Instead of lifting you up like you claim he, does, he did, he just kicked you while you were down. Told you were nothing. Imagine if Jesus did that to you. You know, and may, and may I remind people, on Judgment Day, God will judge you based on the way you judge others. So how you judge me and you judge others is how God will judge you. So if you're going to be not fair in your judgment and not forgiven and unmerciful and you just want to just 
strangely attack people that's what you're going to get on judgment day which is essentially hellfire i mean you don't want that do you or, or maybe you think in your head that you deserve hellfire while you're wishing it upon others like <laughs> I don't know. I do I do honestly think the last marker of maturity and faith is when you start praying for your enemies and you start wanting your enemies to do better instead of continuing on with the fight. No. Nah. I repent of that behavior. I really do. You know, because fighting is not the way. You know, you, you think about it. Do you like when someone comes to you obnoxiously and, and is rude and crude to you? No. Then why are you doing it to others? You know? That's when God says, dude, you're a huge hypocrite. <laughs> no. No, I, I don't like being treated in certain ways, so I'm not going to treat others in certain ways because I don't like being treated that way. That's how you do the golden rule. Which is in all cultures the golden rule, by the way. It's just not a Christian thing to love others as yourself. It's in every culture, in every religion, because it's a fact, it's a truth, you know, you get what you put out into the world. If, if you're consumed with drama and, and hatred and and trying to tear people down that's what you're going to receive back for yourself and I, I I recognize that you know and I recognize that hurt people hurt people but there's got to come a point in your life where you put that hurt away and you try not to put it out on others you know, I, I mean, be a little mature and have a little bit self-control. And it's, it's I, I see people in their 50s and 60s without self-control. And it's sad. It's sad because it, it shows me that the Holy Spirit isn't working in them. Which makes me wonder where their faith is if the Holy Spirit isn't working in them. Like lack of self control and being mean and cruel and wanting to destroy others, you, you, you're not showing the Holy Spirit at all. You're not showing the fruit of the Spirit. So maybe it's time you take a step back, reevaluate your faith, and 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 try not to be on the chopping block. Just try. All it takes is a little bit of kindness. I know it's hard, but that's pretty much what it requires is kindness. I mean, I mean, would I, would it be better to simplify do not sin to like just be kind? Try not to harm others. Is that, is that like, is that like, I mean, that's, I don't know how else to put it. Like, whenever you go out of that spectrum of not being loving and caring, you're outside of Christ. You're outside of Christ. And I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of that. I've done it plenty of times, and I feel bad for it. That's why I, I apologize. Which you should start doing, too. If you're a believer in Christ, learn how to apologize and put your ego behind Because Judgment Day is coming sooner than later. We, we are all required to die in life. 
It is our fate to die. And I would think people would be a little bit more responsible with their lives and others and have the self-awareness and self-control to realize that being cruel and mean isn't the way for anyone in humanity. Anyway, I hope you get that. I pray Jesus Christ blesses you all, even in my enemies, abundantly. But please reevaluate your behavior and your fruit. I implore you to. And if you have thoughts of hurting someone or being negative towards someone or wanting to destroy someone, you're not thinking like Christ. You're thinking like Satan. Please keep that in mind. Anyway, I said what I needed to say. Peace and Maranatha, my loves. If you liked my video, thumbs upy. If you don't, thumbs downsy. If you would like to donate, it is in my description. It would help us out. Kind of hungry up in this household. But please stop harming other people, being mean spirited of people. And then on the other side of your face, claiming you serve Jesus because you don't. Jesus don't like ugly. Have a nice night, guys.